Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this endlessly looping smoke effect. Now, I've done endlessly looping tutorials before, but I don't think I've yet done one that actually uses live action as in this case. And I think this is going to be quite fun. So let's make a start. OK, so here we are in a new project. It's 1920 1080. It's 24 frames a second and the duration is five seconds. Now, before I launch into the main part of this project, I actually want to show you the theory behind it, because it's often quite hard to get your head around how an endless loop actually works. So let's come over to the library and let's come to generators and text generators and numbers. And let's bring that in there. I'm just going to center it up. I'm going to increase the size a bit like that. I also want to just draw a box around that like this, holding down the shift key to make it square. Turn off fill, turn on outline. So I might just uh, center up that box and just set the baseline of my numbers so it's in the middle of the box. We'll be using this box later on, which is why I've actually bothered to set it up properly. OK, so what we're going to do with this group is that we're going to make a clone of it. So right click and make clone layer and let's turn off the original. And then having made our clone, we are going to come to object and replicate. So what we're going to do is choose line for the shape. And I'm going to set the X start to negative 720 and the X end to positive 720. So now we've got those like that. The first frame is one and the last frame is 120. If we come over to the generator, you can see how that's set up. So first frame is one, last frame is 120. If for some reason this is not looking like this, you do need to make sure that you come over to the motion settings and time and make sure that frame numbering starts from one rather than from zero. So what we're going to do is we are going to come over to the replicator and we are going to use the source frame offset. And we're going to set that to something like 12. I just want you to note that in its wisdom, Motion decided to change that number from a 12 to an 11 behind my back, but I'll sort that out in just one second. Sorry about that. So now I want you to look at what happens with the numbers. This second box starts at frame 12. That's because we've got an 11 frame offset. I actually wanted a 12 frame offset. So let's set that to 12 frame offset. It doesn't really matter, but let's just be consistent with what I actually said. And then I'm going to come to the last frame. So remember, this is 13 at frame one. And at the last frame, it's 12. What that means is that when we loop, 12 is going to go to 13. Let's look at the next box. This is 25. So come to the end. And this frame is 24. So 24 is going to 25 and so on. So the next box is 37. And the last frame is 36. And you can guess 48 for that box there. And 49 for the start. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense now. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take our numbers and I'm going to add a basic motion and a fade in, fade out. And I'm actually going to set this to something like 50 and 50. So this is what we're actually going to be doing with our smoke element once we bring it in. So this box here is black at the start. So it fades in and then it fades out, as you imagine. But all of these other boxes have got their fades offset because their start time is offset. And so this is the principle. So they're actually going to loop back perfectly because of what we looked at earlier. But also this fade is going to allow them to appear and disappear invisibly and therefore create our endless loop. So I hope you've understood that principle. And let's now turn off these numbers and let's import our smoke. So come to import and import the thing called smoke asset. And I will give you a link to this. Now, I'd like to thank uh, Sol Friedman for very kindly shooting this smoke for me. It's a really nice asset. So I'm going to come to scale and set this to 75%. I also come to, want to come to this group and I want to set it to fixed resolution 
and 800 by 800. Now I also want to move this rectangle up above the smoke and I want to set its size to 800 as well. So then let's come over to our replicator where it's all going to happen. So we don't want this spread across the x-axis, we want it spread on the z-axis. And we don't actually have the z-axis accessible at this point, and that's because we need to turn on the 3D switch. So let's do that. You can see immediately we get the z as an option. So I'm going to zero out that x and this one here, and I'm going to set this z value, the end point, to negative 800. Then I'm going to turn this group here, the top one, to 3D, and I'm going to come to Object and Camera, and I'm just going to come to the camera's Y rotation, and I'm going to set that to 30 degrees. And what I'm also going to do, actually, while I'm at it, is I'm going to come back to the Project Properties, and I'm going to set the width to 1080, so we've got a, a square like this, and center everything up. Just come back to my camera and align that a little bit better like so. So if we look at our smoke, you'll see that it's kind of all right, but it's popping off like that. So we haven't got the loop working. And that's because we need to actually use this fade in, fade out. And let's just move that off the numbers and onto the smoke asset. Just to remind you, we had a fade in and fade out time of 50 frames. So now, as we pass through the loop, you can see that that's all actually working perfectly. And this will go on forever. So let's just do a little bit of tidying up here. What I want to do is I want to come to the smoke and color and hue saturation and just kill all the color out of it like so. Then let's also come to filters and masks and keying and luma keyer. You can see that's already actually made it a little bit more interesting if I toggle that on and off because we're actually seeing through the individual panels because they've now got transparency. I might just adjust this a little bit by pulling this one over and this one over like this. It would be so nice if Apple actually gave us some numbers to do this, but you know, they're not going to do that. That's looking a little bit more dramatic. So then I also want to come to this group here and filters and color and levels. I want to come to the red channel and bring it way down like that. I want to come to the green channel and bring it down just a little bit like this. Then I want to come to this rectangle here. I'm going to set its blend mode to add and the opacity down to something like 10. Then I'm going to add to it filters and border and stroke. So I want to set the color to white. Then I'm going to set the width to 200 and the fade outside I'm going to set to 50%. And then I'm also going to set this mix value down to 50%. And change the position to centered. And that's going to give me the effects that I want. You can see, actually, maybe I'll increase that mix value. You can see we've got a, this feeling that there are kind of panes of glass like that. So we're pretty much done. We can come back to the replicator. We can have as many of these as we want. We just don't have to have five. I think I might go with something like nine. That looks quite nice to me. And our loop is still working perfectly nicely, as you'll see as we go through the loop point there. Nothing to see, all really nice and smooth. And obviously this is a, a 3D object. If we didn't want to use a loop, we could um, animate the camera and you know, sort of see around through that. I think this is a really lovely effect when you're seeing those smoke layers. But because we want this seamless loop, we really want to leave that camera alone. There's just one other thing we need to make sure to do, and that's to come over to the library and generators and grab a color solid. Just drop it in at the back there, make it 2D, come to the inspector, and let's just make this black. If you don't, your GIF, if that's what you're going to be making, is going to look absolutely terrible. So what I did to make my GIF was I used compressor, compressor, and I used the animated large motion graphics preset I actually just customized it a little bit and, and made it my own. But um, that, that's a pretty good way of, of making a GIF if you actually have compressor. But there are lots of uh, utilities, free and otherwise, that you can find uh, to do the same job. So anyway, I think that is pretty much the effect. I hope that's been interesting. Thanks very much indeed for watching. I'll see you again soon. <laughs>